look at this video so we take some copper sulfate crystals in a test tube you can see the color of the crystals is blue now we will heat this test tube we'll heat the copper sulfate crystals as we heat it we see that the blue color disappears and it becomes white you can also see the water droplets on the test tube so what exactly is happening here when we are heating the blue copper sulfate crystals they turn into white color so why is it so let us see so blue copper sulfate crystals they turn whitish on grayish on heating because the heat energy the heat from the flame it causes the crystals to lose their water of crystallization so this means that the blue copper sulfate contains some water the crystals contain water the formula is written as cuso4 dot 5 h2o this 5 h2o in with every molecule of cuso4 this 5 units of water this is the water of crystallization water of crystallization this is the water of crystallization this five molecules of water but when we heat it this five molecule of water get separated from these crystals as we had seen tiny water droplets can be observed on the test tube so i can write the reaction as cuso4.5h2o gives us copper sulfate and water so these water molecules these water droplets were observed on the sides of the test tube this is blue in color because of the present of water and this is white in color and this is the water of crystallization now when we add water to this white copper sulfate see we add a few drops of water and we find that it turns blue again so when we add water to white copper sulfate it turns into blue colored copper sulfate again why does it happen let us see now when water is added again to the white copper sulfate the blue color is restored the blue color again comes back so the dry copper sulfate we say that it regains its water of crystallization so initially on heating it lost its water of crystallization now it regains or gets back its water of crystallization so when we apply water or add water to the dry copper sulfate which was white in color it regains its water of crystallization and turns blue in color now what is water of crystallization water of crystallization is the fixed number of water molecules present in one formula unit of a salt so this is one formula unit of a salt and the fixed number of water molecules present so remember you cannot write this as cuso4.4 h2o or dot 3 h2o or any number of your choice it is fixed so with one formula unit of copper sulfate five molecules of water will be present so for copper sulfate if we have to find water of crystallization it will be a fixed number of molecules that is five molecules of water now gypsum is another salt gypsum also contains 
water of crystallization so it is another salt which contains water of crystallization the formula for gypsum is this caso4 dot 2h2o so as we can see it contains two molecules of water of crystallization so this is water of crystallization this is the water of crystallization it contains two molecules of water of crystallization so now can you answer this question what is the chemical formula for gypsum well as we had seen gypsum contains two molecules of water of crystallization so this will be the answer it is calcium sulfate salt with two molecules of water of crystallization now look at this substance do you know what it is well i can give you a hint this is used for making sculptures it is used for making false ceilings in your houses it is used for making bone casts for if someone's bone is fractured doctors use casts or plasters made of this substance to keep the bone keep the fractured bone in the correct position so what is it it is plaster of paris in short it is also written as pop plaster of paris now how can we obtain plaster of paris from gypsum well let us look at a video so in this video we have gypsum this salt called gypsum and now when it is heated so we are heating it over a flame when it is heated we see that we get a white colored powder we get a white colored powder substance this is plaster of paris this white colored powder is plaster of paris so we saw that when gypsum is heated in fact when it is heated at a temperature of 373 kelvin it loses one and a half molecules of water and we are left with caso4 dot half h2o which is the formula for plaster of paris so this is the formula for plaster of paris and plaster of paris is also called calcium sulfate hemihydrate this is calcium sulfate and hemihydrate hemi because there is half molecule hydrate for water so hemihydrate means for half a molecule of water calcium sulfate hemihydrate this is the formula for plaster of paris so when gypsum is heated at 373 kelvin it loses one and a half molecules of water and we get plaster of paris which has calcium sulfate with half a molecule of water now if you add water again to plaster of paris you will get back gypsum so similar in the case of copper sulfate what we saw in the case of copper sulfate over here also if you add water you will get back gypsum now you might be thinking something what exactly do we mean by half a molecule of water well don't get confused this simply means that two formula units of plaster of paris share one molecule of water so two formula units share one molecule of water that is why when i have to represent one formula unit in an equation i make it half but it's actually one molecule of water shared between two formula units so this was all about the salt crystals the hydrated crystals how we can make them dry by heating them and again how we can add water and they again become 
the original form. 